At the time of this recording, Next.js 15 has officially been released and it is ready for production. So there is a few breaking changes and changes that are released with this version. But in this video, I wanna go over the form component and how to use it and the use case for using it as well. So before we get started, if you can hit that like button and then also subscribe for more content just like this, that would be greatly appreciated. But other than that, let's jump into it. So let's go over the most important thing when it comes to the form component and version 15. So first off, the form component isn't gonna be used in every use case scenario. It's only gonna be used in specific cases, especially when you're doing a search query of a database or blog post, something along those lines, that's when you'll use this form component. If not, you're probably gonna use something like React hook form, a library like that, which I would recommend. But let's first go over the docs real quick. And the main thing is your behavior of the form component is going to depend on whether the action prop is passed as a string or a function. So if you pass the action prop as a function, that means you're going to be using a server action on the form. So when the form is submitted, you are going to request that server action and run your code. Now you're able to also pass a string. And then when an action is a string, the form is going to behave like a native HTML form that uses the get method. Then the form data from the input and the form is going to be encoded into the URL as a search param. And when the form is submitted, it's going to navigate to the specified URL that you designated inside of the action prop. The form component also extends the HTML form element and it's gonna provide prefetching of loading UI. So that's stuff on the layout.tsx file and anything that is being shared. It's also gonna allow client side navigation, which means the page isn't gonna reload. So no more reloading of the page, it's just gonna go directly and navigate to that page that you sum went on submission. And progressive enhancement allows this still to run even if the JavaScript hasn't loaded. I am now inside of a Next.js 15 project all you have to do is run the command npx create dash next dash app at latest and just answer the questions that are prompted on the screen and then you should be able to have a buller plate next.js application. So for my homepage, I removed everything and then I added this code. And if you're wondering where I got this code from, if you go to the docs, this is the example that they use, which is a search form that leads to a search result. And as you can see, I just copy this and paste it. And now let's explain what is going on. So we're importing form from next forward slash form. Then we're using the form component and passing the action prop and it is going to go to the forward slash search page. So that means when this form is submitted, it is going to do a client side navigation to the search page. We also have an input. I added the type that has to be a number and the name is going to be the query. So when we use the search params to find whatever search param it is, we have to search it up using name equals query. You could change this to whatever you want, but that is pretty common when you're passing in search params inside of the URL. And then we have a button with the type of submit so it can submit the actual form. Let's see how the URL is going to look after we do a search request, right? So we have the input here, which is hidden, and then the button that's submit. So I did type number, so it has to be a number that we put in the search, right? So I do one. So if I do one, I click submit, look at this URL, right? Localhost 3000 forward slash search question mark query equals one. And obviously it's displaying results and I'll go over that in a second, but this is coming from the homepage, right? Because we define the name attribute as query and we have the button with the submit and this form component from Next.js by default puts the value from the form into the URL search params. So that is what's going on there. Okay, and it's also going to the search page because we defined it in the action. So if you defined a different page, it'll go to that page. So now what you need to do is you need to create a search page, which I've done already. So I have the search folder inside of the app directory and I have a page.tsx file inside of the search folder. Now I'll explain this code as well. So what we're doing is first we're importing the fetch users post, which is a server action I created. And the reason why I created server action was to call a specific endpoint. And what I'm using is the JSON type placeholder. It pretty much gives JSON placeholder.typeycode. 
it gives you dummy data to request API so you could just practice with, okay? It's free and you guys go to the website and see the different endpoints that they offer. And so what we're doing here is we're taking in a parameter called user ID, right? And then we're trying to find the posts that are associated with the specific user ID. And the whole project is we are typing in a number in the input, which is the user ID. We're submitting it. We are calling this asynchronous function, right? and we are finding the posts associated with that number. So if we go back to the page, right, we land on the search page with some search params inside of the URL. So we need to extract those search params. And the way to do that is by pretty much passing it in as a prop into the page. So as you can see, what I did is I have the function search result page. It's an asynchronous function. I'm on line five and we're passing in the props and inside of the props object, we have a search params and is I have it equal to the type search params. And I've defined the type search params here and it is a promise, right? That has an object which can be of key of string or a string array or undefined. And then what I have here is to extract the search params, you need to use a wait now. So Previously, you didn't have to. This is one of the breaking changes, but this is a pretty much kind of a totally different topic. We're really going over the forms, but this is the syntax for the new way of doing it. I declare a variable called search params, and then I'm awaiting the props dot search params, right? Because we are passing in the props, and then we have inside that props object, the search params. And what I can do here is I can console dot log I'm going to say search params and then search params like this. So we're going to see what we get for the search params here. So we're going to open up the terminal because that's where we're going to get the console, right? I'm also console logging the posts, so let me stop doing that. Let's go back to our development server. Let's go to the home page. Let's do a search of three. We submit. Let's go to the console, and as you can see, the console search params query is three. So it's this console here on line 10. This is the result we're getting. So that means we are storing this console, right, inside of this variable. And to get three out of it, we need to do search params dot query. So we set that inside of the variable user ID query. So now the user ID query is going to equal the string of three, okay? And then we are doing a check. If there's no user ID query, we just return a div saying no search query provided. And then what I'm doing here is I'm calling that uh, server action by storing it in the post variable. And what we're doing here is we are passing in whatever that search query was, right? That search params query we're passing it in to this function, fetch user post. And as you can see, it takes it in here and then it uses it in the fetch request to this specific endpoint. And then we're returning the post that we get back from this API call. And then all I'm doing here is I am mapping through the post. I am using type any just for this specific example. And like I said, we're mapping through the post, showing the post.title and post.body on the search page. As you can see, I'm on the search page. So the three things I've done, the three pages I've created or files, three files I've created, was the home page, which is the form component. I have the search page, which is where we land after the form is submitted and we're getting the search param. And then I created a server action, which is literally seven lines of code calling the JSON placeholder API. And as you can see how it works fully, let's go back to localhost 3000. Let's type in four, we submit it, and we are storing the search results for user four. This is the blog title and then the blog description. And obviously I'm zoomed in a lot and you can style this how you want. But this is how you are going to use the form component when using the search form that leads to a cert result page. That's exactly the example I showed. It is that easy. You could set it up in five to 10 minutes. You just have to have a database that you are pretty much 
going to query into to actually display to your final user. So this is the main change and main thing that is associated when it comes to the form component with Next.js 15. There's a few other things we can go over, but for this video, I think that's enough for you to digest. So I'm gonna stop there. And in the next few days, I'm also going to come out the video related to all the changes and breaking changes in Next.js 15. So hopefully you guys found a lot of value out of this video. And if you did, if you can hit that like button and also subscribe for more content. And if you do have any questions or comments, do leave them down in the comment section down below of this video. And I will get back with you as soon as I can. But other than that, you guys have a great day and happy coding.